Where do you stand on the Mascherano penalty? I think in, in the world that we live in now with VAR and the super slow motion, is, it looks worse than what it really was. But nowadays you put two arms around somebody and you see it slow motion. Once he called it, there was no chance that he was going to go back because you look at the replay and everybody sitting in this room would be like, well, yeah, that's a penalty. Had he not called it initially, I don't think we would be saying it's a penalty. Right. But you can't go back because it's not clear and obvious mistake. I wouldn't have called it a penalty, but in the end... The uh, penalty all day. The penalty all day. Listen, the one, the one good thing, right, that will come out of this is it might stop defenders doing stupid things like that. You know, you, you, I'm assuming he was taught at some stage, uh, Mascherano, how to defend properly. And at no stage, I'm going to guess, did any coach ever tell him that you put two hands round your opponent, and you hold on to him Steve, for 30 a, there's seconds. There's a theory from some that this has always been the case, that people have always been holding in the box. Not mm. at all. That's, a, that's, that's nonsense. This is, this is something that, that started probably 15, 20 years ago. Listen, if, if you were getting held in the box when him and I were playing, it was a penalty kick. All of a sudden, they stopped giving penalty kicks for it. Right. And with the introduction of VAR, I'm glad to say that now it might make defenders have to defend properly and not cheat and basically get away with not, not, my only, not my, being good at your craft. My, my only point, Steve, <coughs> is that we saw Mitrovic the other, game, the other day for uh, Serbia where he was manhandled, not by one guy, but by two guys. And that play was not even looked upon by VAR. So I'm just looking for consistency. That's all. Right. Well, that's what people are screaming as well after we saw the penalty that was awarded uh, for the handball in yesterday's Portugal game. People were saying, well, why wasn't there a handball against Rojo uh, later well, on? I didn't think the one yesterday was a penalty, but it was headed by the opponent onto his arm. The difference here is, and people seem to have uh, lost track with this, is that Marcus Rojo inadvertently headed it onto his arm. Sure. It's a bit like coming out to block a shot if you're a defender. Uh, and and you, you go to ground and the ball strikes you on the thigh and goes up and hits you on the arm. That's not a penalty either. And I think you saw with the referee, uh, he's a very experienced referee, as soon as he went to the, the VAR, yeah. as soon as he saw it come off Marcus Rojo's head... One replay, and, he, and then he went back for another check, and he saw the clip, and he went, no, no penalty. Yeah, would, there's still people arguing about I would, it. I would actually thought that there was one earlier that was more of a penalty when, when Ian Atchell got, got kicked in the head. Right. And nobody did, nobody did anything. They didn't look at it again. I, I suppose the I argument was, that didn't he get the ball first and then caught his head on the way down? Is that well, it's argument? reckless. Right. It's, it's called being reckless now. So if I was, if, if I was an IG, I'd be more... Uh, I'd be more angry that that one wasn't given yeah. rather than the, head, I, the, the handball. Again, I didn't think that was a penalty, but uh, it, it's where this is subjective. Even with a system in place that allows you to look at this replays, it still comes down to the decision of the referee. And even in, in the sequence that you're talking about, the fact that they don't even take another look at it, it just gives you an idea that there is inconsistency in the implementation of the system. And uh, overall, I think the, the system has worked. And, and, and I think we'll, we'll, no better example than the game yesterday with Spain. Yeah. If the system is not in place, Spain is not going through. Sure. And so it just gives you a sense that the system is working, but boy, there are a lot of things that they sort of need to be ironed out in terms of the details. Uh, so let's just uh, remind you how Group D finished up and how close Argentina were to going out. I remember they were bottom for a long time during those matches. But it's Croatia and Argentina who advanced, Nigeria and Iceland going home.